In today's video, we're talking about absolutely essential gear for photo editing. Welcome back and thank you so very much for clicking on that thumbnail. My name is Daniel Troutman with the smashcake.com, your online resource for free, say it with me, free smash cake photography training. Yeah, you heard me right, I said free. And it all lives over there at the smashcake.com. Now in today's video, I wanna talk about editing and how much I love it slash hate it. On the love side, it is a great way to go ahead and take the image that you see in your head and bring it into the world. It really is the cherry on top of the photo photo Sunday. I must be hungry. Now, back in the day when I was doing like one or two sessions a week, editing was great. I got lost in it. I spent hours doing it and I absolutely loved it. But the minute our studio started doing three and four customers a day, well, that editing turned into a bit of a slog and a bit of a grind. Now, there are some essential pieces of gear that you can purchase to make that grind a whole lot easier and a whole lot more productive. Whether you're doing one to two sessions a month or you're doing three and four and five clients a day. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get into today's list of essential editing gear that every photographer needs to have. Today we're going to go ahead and do something a little weird. We're going to actually lead with the most important item on the list because I am a realist and I understand that not everybody makes it to the end of the video and this particular item is the most important thing when it comes to photo editing. And of course I'm talking about a monitor calibrating device. When you go ahead and go into Photoshop and you start editing your photos, if your monitor is too dark, too bright, too red, too green, you're gonna go ahead and edit with all of that and you're gonna be biased by that. So what that means really is that the images in your Photoshop file, are, they're gonna look great to your eye, but the minute you send that file to the print lab and they print you out a representation of what you just did on that wonky monitor, it's going to look like absolute crap. Now, this very much happened to me in the beginning of my photography career. I spent weeks chasing my tail trying to figure out why my print lab was, uh, you know, sucked so bad, why the prints looked so awful. And really, the, the problem was me. It was my monitors. Now, these guys are super simple to use. Don't be afraid of them. They um, really have some nice software that will lead you through the whole process. All you really need to do is take this guy right here and stick him to your monitor and he will just dangle there from the top of your monitor and then the software will prompt you step by step into the calibrating process. It's pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy. And it, again, it's gonna save you an absolute ton of time and frustration and it's gonna save you money in reprints that you're not gonna have to do. Now the next item on the list is something I don't use while editing at all. And I know what you're saying, you're like, hey, but the video is called, I get you, don't worry about it. I use this on location and it, it is a gray card for white balancing my camera. You would not believe how much time white balancing your camera is gonna save you in post-production. You take something like this, you point your camera at it, and then you load that picture of this into Lightroom and use the eyedropper in Lightroom to click the gray or click the white. And then magically, uh, Lightroom just knows how to white balance perfectly that image. At that point, it's a matter of just copying those settings and pasting them on every image in your catalog. And it saves you a ton of time because if you figure you spend maybe a minute, minute and 30 seconds on white balancing every image, well, multiplied by two or 300 images, and you've just saved a ton of time. And it's all thanks to this guy right here. Now, gray cards come in a whole lot of different styles. You've got this guy here, and you've got the Expo Disc here that you snap onto your lens, you point your lens at a light source, click the button, and it white balances your camera. And you've got the little collapsible pop-up ones. Um, there's a ton of them out there, so I'm gonna go ahead and list my three favorites in the description section of this video for you guys to go ahead and check out on your own. So the next item on today's list, I just happen to be sitting on, and no, it's not my butt. It is this beautiful, handy dandy ergonomic chair. I don't know if you guys can see that because my big fat bahooki is sitting in it, but there it is. And honestly, at the beginning of my career, I'm like, that's a luxury, all right? So spending, you know, $300 on a chair just seemed a bit like a luxury. But here's the deal. I would grind it out in these rickety old office chairs and then go to the chiropractor's office like four times a month 
And you know, for what I paid that chiropractor, I could have very easily bought this chair and stopped the problem at the source. Now, one of the features of the chair I'm sitting in that I want to point out to you that is absolutely essential for uh, Photoshop editors or any sort of computer, uh, you know, work cubicle dwellers, I guess is what I'm trying not to say, is you see that mesh back there. That mesh is massively important because if you go with like a gaming chair, those are kind of leather or plastic or pleather, I guess vegan leather is what we're calling it now. They are vegan leather chairs and they don't breathe and at the end of the day, the back of your shirt is all swampy McNasty. So really and truly, you're going to want to go with the mesh. Now this is the Dexley mesh ergonomic chair from I believe Staples and it is currently at the time of this video on sale for $150 so definitely check this out um, you know save yourself from the chiropractor and save yourself from a swampy back end sorry I couldn't resist now the next item on the list I wish I could show you I'm actually using it and that is a monitor stand we're gonna go ahead and show you a monitor stand so that you know what one looks like and really honestly monitor stand right you know what it is so really and truly the monitor stand is hugely important because when you spend hours upon hours in Photoshop every day and your monitor is on that desktop what's gonna happen is that you are gonna slowly become a human turtle that's not a good look all right you want to avoid the human turtle and all you have to do to do it is buy yourself a 15 to 35 dollar monitor stand and get that monitor back up here and get your back all nice and straight and save yourself from well becoming this guy Next up, we've got something that is absolutely essential. I could not live without it, and I've got it right here. This is the Wacom or Wacom Bamboo Pen and Touch Tablet. Now, if you are still doing photo editing with a mouse, that's a lot like trying to draw with a hockey puck, especially when you get in there with the uh, the stray hairs, and or maybe you're enhancing eyes or whitening teeth. If you really have to get in there and get detailed, the Wacom tablet or the Wacom tablet is the way to go because it's very intuitive. It's just a pen, and we all know how to use a pen from like kindergarten, right? So it's incredibly intuitive and it's incredibly affordable. That Wacom tablet that I showed you right there that thing comes in in the neighborhood of about 99 to 125 bucks and this this particular one right here you can see that it's beat up because I have had this thing for years so it truly is money well spent and it's gonna save you a whole lot of time when you are in uh, you know in fine point editing mode it's gonna save you a massive amount of time so if you're using the hockey puck like this guy right here it's time to consider using a bamboo pen and touch the next item on the list of things that I will not edit without just happens to be a card reader. Now, if you buy a cheap card reader, what's going to happen is it's going to take you 10 to 20 minutes to dump one card. And if you are looking at a project that has multiple memory cards, well, that will add up to be a significant amount of wasted time. So my suggestion to you is go ahead and get yourself a card reader that is about USB 3.0 or better, depending on whether or not you're watching this video in the future, 3.0 or better, and you'll be able to dump your cards in a significantly less amount of time. Now, here's where I wanna caution you guys. Check out, I don't know if you can see it, come on, zoom in, Bubba. Uh, the camera's not gonna zoom in, but right here, where the cord meets the actual unit, you wanna make sure that that is nice and robust. If you buy one of the cheap ones that has like the wires hanging out and then it plugs into the computer, What's going to happen is those wires can become exposed, and this has happened to me personally. The wires became exposed, made contact with my computer case, and fried my hard drive. I lost every image on that hard drive. And worse, I was a brand new baby photographer, and I didn't know to back up my files, so I had to call all of my clients and apologize profusely, and I lost months worth of revenue. So don't cheap out, don't go uber cheap on your card reader, but you know, this guy right here, he does the job. He's got multiple types of inputs there for different types of cards, and he does the job quite well, and he does it for around $15. So check out the WeMe card reader on Amazon, link in the description. Now the last thing on the list is a monitor hood. Now this thing is going to sit on your monitor and it is gonna block stray light from hitting your monitor. And why is that important? 
Well, honestly, if stray light is causing a glare on your monitor, it's gonna cause you to not be able to see your images as well. And you're gonna either, you know, raise the exposure to see them better or really pump up that contrast in order to see them through the glare. And then of course, just like having a wonky calibrated monitor, it's gonna result in prints that don't look very good, which results in wasted time and of course, wasted money. So all you have to do is snap a monitor hood onto your monitor and it absorbs all of that light or blocks it from ever reaching your screen. So they're hugely important. They are not a luxury and it's not really something that every photographer thinks about putting on their monitor. So definitely check one out. You will thank me later. This is something that I put on my monitor and absolutely love and will not edit without. Well, sadly, you guys, it's time for us to say goodbye. But for those of you who suffer from separation anxiety and you don't want to leave all of this, well, feel free to hang out with me all day long by watching one of those videos right over there. Now, until next time, guys, I'm Daniel Troutman with Smashcake.com. Thank you so very much for clicking on that thumbnail and hanging out with me today. And I will see you in next week's video. Bye-bye.